So this is my daughter, Hannah. Hannah loves me very much, and she bought me a gift for my birthday to keep my soda cold at work. She bought me one of these little refrigerators that you set a single can on here, mm -mm. and it's supposed to make it colder. But what we found was that this was powered by USB, which of course is 5 volts, and it had kind of inadequate cooling to take the heat away and inadequate contact. And so what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade this a little bit. So instead of the aluminum heat sink here with the Peltier device in between, the thermoelectric cooler, and just a flat plate of aluminum on the top, we're going to see about upgrading this a bit and turn up the voltage just a little bit. So we're using a two and a half inch copper pipe cap because of its thermal conductivity. Uh, we need to get the bottom as, um, poly as smooth and flat as possible because the heat sink is flat and so we need as much contact as we can to get the thermal conductivity as high as we can. So to get it flat, we're going to sand the bottom down. So this is the thermal electric cooler, and we want the heat going away into this copper heat sink. So we, there's a hot side and a cool side. So we have to put the hot side on the copper heat sink to get the heat away, and the cold side on the two and a half inch uh, copper pipe cap to get it to the can. And to do that, we're going to use this uh, thermal paste. So, this is our temperature controller. And um, so, it's reading the temperature of the copper pipe cap. And uh, it's, we've set it to zero degrees Celsius to make it almost, free to make it freezing point. When it's above that, it tells the cool down or do nothing. So right now, it is cooling it down, and in a minute, it'll stop. So now that it's stopped, as soon as the temperature raises, it'll start up again to make it continually the same degree. We're going to insulate the cold side so that we don't have condensation or heat loss. So here is our micro fridge fully functioning. Uh, we added screws on the bottom to hold it up off of the table so that the heat had somewhere to go and wasn't just laying on the table. Um, we also added a switch. It's one of two original pieces, the switch and the body. So the switch just turns it on and off so that we don't have to keep it running 24-7. Um, instead of a 5-volt power supply, we're using a 9 volt power supply that we actually took from a DVD player you can have in the car. Um, so after that we mounted the temperature controller. So we Gorilla glued it to the body. Uh, but we ran into a problem. The compressor and the relay, which were ones right here, ran into the can. So we took them off of there wired them through the back and put them on their own circuit board down here. Um, so to cool the can a bit faster we added a koozie so that can keep the cold onto the coke as it's cooling and our temperature sensor we stick in the koozie on the side so that it can read the temperature of the coke not the koozie. Um, so, the performance is a lot better than what we began with. Uh, 
now it cools a room temperature Coke to drinkable temperatures, which is almost freezing, in a little bit uh, over four hours. So if you have an already cool Coke and you put it in there, it'll stay cool for as long as you want. To up our performance a little bit, we're going to put some insulation on the side so that it cools it even faster. Well, this started off as a very thoughtful birthday gift from my lovely daughter to allow me to keep a can of Coke cold in my office. And it turned into a very fun project that we got to do together. We got to learn a lot about electricity and about thermodynamics and heat transfer. And so now we have this fully functional micro fridge and we've spent a lot of fun time together and uh, it's just been a great project.